formally on behalf of the entire university management, that is the vice chancellor, the registrar, and other principal staff. Our also the academic and non-academic members and other students officially welcoming our proud parents, other visitors into our midst, as well as the gentlemen of the press. It is indeed a beautiful day. And yes, it, every convocation ceremony in Augustine University is always a memorable event in the annals of our history as a university. To the parents of this proud graduating set, your joy knows no bound today. And it goes without saying, four years ago, 61 proud graduating instead, the graduating members of class are here seated. But trust me, 61 didn't start the race four years ago. There were more than this. But hey, 61 of, the, of them are proudly been officially introduced into the labor market, introduced into the world to change the system. To change the status quo. On that note, I once again welcome everybody. The members of the religious, the clergy in here in our midst, and also other people right on their way. We say good morning. Welcome to Augustine University. Welcome to the fourth convocation ceremony of Augustine University. 61 proud students, 61 proud parents, and their families here to grace this honorable and epoch-making event. And in the usual practice, we just run you through the tradition in Augustine University. The tradition of how a ceremony as big as a convocation actually play out. And as you can see, the 61 of them are seated. While in a couple of minutes, the procession will commence, and this will be the order of procession as contained in our event brochure. Leading the pack in terms of procession is the faculty officers, followed by the Senate members and members of congregation. Then, ably followed by the heads of departments, followed by the deans of the faculties and student affairs, followed by the university librarian, the university bossa, the university registrar, the visiting registrars, the visiting vice chancellors. Then, the mess bearer, ably followed by the vice chancellor followed by the pro-chancellor, ably followed by the chairman board of trustees, the executive secretary of the NUC, if he's represented, the chancellor, and the elephant in the room, the patriarch of the entire university, the proprietor. That will be the order of procession. So when you see the procession in the center aisle of the hall, that is the order in which they're coming in. And once they come in, we are all expected to be on our feet till the last person mounts the stage. national anthem. On page 
three on page three of your brochure. J.K. Anyagu to lead the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our help is in the name of the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you as we gather here this morning for this convocation ceremony. We thank you for another opportunity to watch our children graduate and be sent forth into the world. We thank you for journey mercies granted each and every one of us to come here today. 
We ask for your blessing on our gathering here today. We ask you to bless our university, Augustine University, as we have done in the past, but new to do in the future in the name of Jesus. May this gathering here, Lord, give you honor and glory to your name. May it bring immense pleasure and satisfaction to our graduates and their parents and sponsors. And at the end of today, we have first to give you glorious thanks through Christ our Lord. Saint Augustine, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Monsignor. Shall we please have our seats? At this point, I humbly invite the Registrar of Augustine University to take over the proceedings of today's ceremony. Mrs. Margaret Aziba, the Registrar of Augustine University. The Augustine University is licensed and empowered to grant degrees, certificates, and other distinctions, as well as to award medals, prizes, and other titles. I therefore humbly invite the Chancellor, represented by the Vice Chancellor, to constitute this assembly as a congregation held for the purpose of conferring degrees and presenting awards. I hereby constitute the assembly as a congregation of Augustine University for the purpose of conferring degrees and presenting awards. Thank you, Chancellor. I invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Christopher Odetunde, to deliver his address. The proprietor, His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Arthur Adiwale Martin, the most visionary of Augustine University, His Eminence, Anthony Cardinal Ulubumi Ukoje, the Chancellor, of whom I represent Mr. Femi Medola, the Registrar and other principal officers of the university, the convocation lecturer, Mr. Femi Fahman, members of university senate, staff and students of our illustrious university, AUI benefactors, His Royal Majesty, the Alara of Ilara, Oba Uluka Ede Ulufolani, Friends of the university, parents of graduating students, members of their families, all graduates, alumni members of the of Augustine University, ladies and gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I feel highly honored and delighted to welcome you. AUI's fourth convocation ceremony for the confirmation of degrees and awards. Venite Adoremus Domino. We are grateful for the life and for God's uh, mercies and our favor we receive daily despite the financial and security challenges in this nation. Our presence here today is a powerful testimony that in spite of it all, we are moving, we are making progress.
I'd like to appreciate the proprietor in the person of his grace, uh, Dr. Uh, Adewale Martins. The missionary again, who started the university and is always with us all step of the way. The chairman of board of trustees and his team, the pro chancellor and chairman of council, and all members of Goodwin Council for their active roles. I will join in welcoming the new members of AUI Governing Council and our new chancellor in the person of Mr. Femi Otedola. This is a special day to celebrate our students who have distinguished themselves in their various fields of endeavor. I welcome our distinguished guests, parents, all well-wishers, and our graduates and our graduates to this auspicious occasion. The March, in March 2015, Augusta University began her march as a citadel of learning, and she has been on a progressive path since then. During this period, however, Augusta University of Augusta University's existence, our collective experiences have been mainly good with occasional bumps in the road to stardom. And these experiences are simply a manifestation of growing pains. The primary responsibility of tertiary institutions is to develop a holistic education for national for nation building. As the cost of education of, uh, as the cost of educating our children and words go up, universities must also improve value of education not by producing degree tooting uh, graduates, but graduates that use their acquired knowledge to think outside of the box. We can no longer be delusional about the cost of education all around the world. Because cost of ignorance is much higher. I'd like to update you on the on the university or your university. We proposed five new undergraduate programs for resource verification by the National uh, Universities Commission (NUC). These programs were human anatomy computer engineering, medical lab science, and uh, nursing and physiology. These new programs went on board. We increase our students' population and enhance academic capabilities of AUI. With the support of the owners of the university, we hope to commence any of these programs we have also proposed postgraduate courses in computer science or computer science, one of the engineering programs that is relevant to industrialization and nation building. Faculty of Engineering. The Faculty of the Engineering Building, donated by the Otedola family, is now completed are ready to be handed over to the owners of the university. We appreciate the hotel dollars for their uh, donation of the building, their continuous generosity, and the loving support of the Dorsey University. I'd like to thank the, uh, the matriarch of the hotel dollar family, our, mo our mom, Madam Lady Georgia of Tedola, who always encouraged AUI with a constructive solution.
suggestions. Faculty of Law. The Faculty of Law building has been revisited and it is work in progress. We are eternally uh, grateful to Chief Stephen Bakari Uluwalubo and his family for taking on the challenge of completing the law building. On behalf of AUI, I say thank you. The University Chapel, what a sight. The University Chapel was a dream and a gift from the Akpani family. The chapel is re has reached its final stage of completion, which is the addition of the roof. We are grateful to the Akpani family for leaving an, an indelible lot, uh, footprint on AUR campus. The internal sacristy decoration are in design and implementation stage. We constant input from the Reverend Fathers and Sisters to make the chapel one of the kind chapel uh, to worship in or worship in center in Lagos. So we are very grateful. Now, your university has been growing and with some challenges, lots of challenges just like a growing thing. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to report that since the last convocation, AUR has steadily increased, is steadily increasing uh, its student population or enrollment by the introduction of new programs and improving lecture delivery by engaging value-adding uh, faculty members who are capable of employing new technologies. It's also worth noting that AUI is getting fractions, traction from uh, diaspora parents to visit us on a fact-finding mission. Increase in number of uh, student enrollments demands more infrastructural uh, development on our campus, such as uh, sports facilities, laboratories, hostels, shopping centers, where our students can purchase their needs, as well as where they can socialize. So, All hands must be on deck for men and women, uh, faculty, staff, members of council and BOT to use their good offices and connections to continue to, to contribute to AUI's uh, infrastructural development and other developments. By setting up AUI, we are already water and can no longer be afraid of being cold. Discipline act, disciplinary action. To play the game of, of life well, AUI has, uh, has a roadmap by AUI students information handbook. In the student handbooks, the do's and don'ts of the of AUI is spelled out. The university is very resolute on dealing with all forms of indiscipline, such as academic cheat, uh, cheating, all forms of examination practices, moral dependencies, willful destruction of university properties, all forms of drug abuse and other delinquent behavior that may manifest on our campus. To borrow the, the title of Dolly Patton, all of us know Dolly Patton, the quotes of many
any colors. Any university campus is made of patches of many colors, which must be carefully woven together to arrive at a beautiful color of many coat of many colors. Majority of our students show maturity and comply with the university rules and regulations. But a few of them, of the students, try to be to manipulate the system and thus must be uh, checked. When such manifestations occur on campus, students are carried along to have a buy-in uh, to the methodology, university approved decision process and uh, provide the results of all investigations after all exploratory, exploratory uh, evidences have been thoroughly considered in order to exonerate those who may have been the wrong place at the right time. All our 100 level students are asked to read AUI's student information handbook shared with their parents and endorse it so that there is clarity of what is expected of our students. Now, to our graduating students, they are graduating students. In passing through AUI, no one guarantees you a problem field free world. Indeed, life itself is a series of problem solving. Martin Luther King once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands at the moment of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at the moment of challenge and controversy. That I want you to see, take with you as you go along. Always follow the law of nature. That when you wish somebody good, good things will also happen to you. Remember that every morning we all have. Eight hundred and forty six thousand four hundred seconds to spend and invest. Do not waste your valuable time in comparing yourself with others because you are, we are told by the Bible, we are uniquely built by God. The battle of leadership is now passed on to you. Carry it with pride. Make the best of it and the good ambassador, ambassadors of AUI. We are proud of you. We hope you become teachers and leaders. But remember the words of Martin Luther King again. Uh, you must be leaders not in love with money, but in love with, with justice. And not in love with publicity but in love with humanity. As a leader, you must not compare your, your life with anybody's. But your own, around your own race, however along the way, uh, carry people, other people along. As you depart Augustine University today, you must not be controlled by the fear of unknown. But be driven by the by the dreams of to excel beyond what you have learned at AGU. I congratulate you again as you go out to the world to use your God given talent to serve to service or to serve humanity. Can we please give another round of applause to the Vice Chancellor? Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I now invite the Pro-Chancellor of Augustine University 
and chairman of the governing council, Chief Gibbard Timison Grant, to present his address. Your Grace, the Archbishop of Lagos, now proprietor, your evidence, our Baba and founder of our university, the Chancellor, today represented by the VC, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Sir Steve Omojiafo, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to stand on the protocol that the last speaker very well established. We are here gathered today for the fourth convocation ceremony of Augustine University, Ilara Ekbe. holding on today, 24th of October, 2022. And you constitute the fourth group of graduates from our great university. Please give yourself a round of applause. Each convocation ceremony allows us the opportunity to do three things. The first one is to highlight the state of affairs of Augustine University, especially developments in the last one year and a glimpse into the way forward. The second and most important is about you, the graduates. to send you off with our best wishes and prayers and to make a few remarks to you which we believe will hold you in good stead as you go into the world. The third, of course, is to say thank you to all those who have associated with the development of Augustine University. You will agree with me that the Vice Chancellor has done most of that in his presentation. However, there will be a few points of emphasis that I, as Chairman of the Governing Council, may wish to re-mention for emphasis. The first thing on our state of affairs We keep bringing in new courses because when we started seven and a half years ago, basically it was pure arts, pure science. But progressively, both applied arts, social arts, social studies, and the likes are building up. On the science sector, we have both pure science and applied sciences. And they are growing. Looking forward, we're looking at engineering and law. So I need to make a few statements about that. First, two years ago, we started the Department of Mass Communication on behalf of Council and the VC himself, I believe I can say that the department is growing and beginning to make its mark. I'm saying this in particular for the benefit of you, our parents, guardians, sponsors, and friends. Now, for engineering, the physical structure, thanks to your Tedola family, is virtually completed. But it takes more than the structure to deliver a program. But we are confident that by next session, next year, or no, it's not next year, it's this year, 
Next session. Is that the correct statement? Next session. Uh, first intakes into the Faculty of Engineering will definitely be in place. It will start with computer science because as part of applied science we have already grown the essentials of computer engineering. We have already graduated many students. In fact, at one point it was our flag, flagship department. We graduated many students in computer science. More recently, we started adding some specialty, such as cyber securities and software engineering. So the ingredients are there. And as I said, by next session, we will now put computer engineering. And that will be focal point for computer studies in this part of our country. Now, the law faculty. Yes, the construction of the building started way back. It was purely donor sponsored. And when the donor could not continue, it stopped. But thanks to God, Chief Bakari, of an illustrious man of Ilara Ekbe has come to our rescue. Bakari family, we thank you. With the, with the pace, with the pace at which work is going on, yes, we don't have to downscale, but enough to deliver the faculty of law. With the pace of work going on, I would like to say that if we work hard enough, we should be able to bring in our first group of law students in the next year. Please clap for that now. Uh -huh. But there's, there are other good news. And one of them is what has been happening in the Department of Accounting. Our department of BSc Accounting has been accredited by the Nigerian Institute of Chartered Accountants. This is good news. <laughs> Management, please take maximum advantage of this opportunity. That is by way of highlights of what has been going on in your university. Now to the main issue of our being here. I've always loved this opportunity to talk to our graduates because this is my last opportunity to talk to you as you make your way out of Augustine University. Four years ago, all of you well robed here, ready for your graduation ceremony, came into this university as teenagers, 17 years old, 18, 19. Four years later, you are leaving us as young adults, young adults, 21, 22, 23. Great transformation has taken place. The university is very proud of you. Not only have you grown in age, you've also acquired, with the help of all the management staff here, academic development. So you are going to be graduating from here with specialized degrees as will be carried out by the Chancellor very soon.
as you go as you go please go well yes it is true that times are tough but as the philosopher says when the going is tough the tough gets going but we are letting you go not only with our best wishes but with our prayers we want you to please go in. don't be afraid don't be afraid we want you to go there very confident but please remain very humble finally be very prayerful and don't be wary and God Almighty will see you on. In your four years here, you have also made a lot of friends. I keep reminding you, each one may have made three, four, five friends. As you live here, distance will separate you. There's nothing you can do about that. But we, asking you thanks to internet please keep in touch with each other because for those of us on this side of the hall we have learned very well in life that the best friends you make are those friends you make in your primary secondary and tertiary institutions they will remain your best friends in life please stay in touch with them you will not regret it finally you are leaving us as a university you are graduating from the university but you are graduating into a body of alumni gradually this is the fourth round gradually that body is growing this is the body that will be the best advertisement for augustine university you know why because when you go out and you excel as we pray you will somebody is bound to ask where did you go to school when that happens Please just remind them to Augustine University in Lara Ekwe. When that happens, you've done great for the university. Again, as alumni, please try early in life to form the spirit of giving. When I say give, I'm not talking about giving money. Because you don't have money now. You will have money at an appropriate time. But you have a lot more than money. You have a knowledge. And you have your time. You have your intellect. When it becomes possible to give of this, please be generous about it. You will not regret it. It will only hold you in good stead. I cannot leave this podium without saying a very big thank you to all the parents, guardians, and sponsors who continue to have confidence in Augustine University, even at the time we had no track record. We're building the track records. They are coming, little by little. But for those of you who have trusted in us, and entrusted your children to us. We hope you like what we have turned them into. If you are, all we are asking you to do for Augustine University is when you go away and anyone should ask looking for where to send their children to for a good education, please say Augustine University is a university of choice and you would have done your job. I think I will stop here because 
the fellow coming after me. We are privileged to have him and he's going to be talking to this body also. Our guest speaker, we are privileged to have you. And he will be talking to you about reforming the country. And in particular, what contributions you, the young ones, can make. Thank you very much for listening attentively to me. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pro Chancellor, Chief Grant. Please let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you. Before the, we go on to the section of a convocation lecture, and before the lecturer will come up here to deliver the convocation lecture, I invite the university orator, Dr. James Onyeashe, to read the citation of the convocation lecturer. Dr. Onyeashe. The proprietor and visitor to the university, the visioner and project initiator, the chancellor as represented, the chairman board of trustees, the pro-chancellor, the vice chancellor, sir, I request to kindly adopt the protocol already established to invite the convocation lecturer, Mr. Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria, son, for his citation. The convocation lecturer for the fourth convocation ceremony is the iconic Mr. Femi Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Senior Advocate of the Masses. He was born in Ilawe City on May 20, 1958. He attended St. Michael's Primary School at Ilawe, 1963 to 1968, and the Sacred Heart Seminary, Akure, Ondo State, 1971 to 1975. He studied law at the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, 1977 to 1982, and the Nigerian Law School, 1981 to 1982. Since he was called to the bar in July 1982, he has been in active legal practice, majoring in human rights and international humanitarian law. Mr. Femi Falano has been in the forefront of the struggle for the defense and promotion of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law in Africa. Apart from his regular appearances in Nigerian courts, he represents victims of human rights abuse at the African Commission on Human and People's Rights in Banjul, the Gambia, Community Court of Justice in Abuja, Nigeria, and African Court on Human and People's Rights in Arusha, Tanzania. Following the suspension of human rights provisions entrenched in the Constitution by successive military regimes, Mr. Falano convinced Nigerian courts to uphold the human rights of the Nigerian people guaranteed by the African Charter on Human People's Rights. He equally championed the, the campaign which led to the expansion of the mandate of the Community Court of Justice to enforce the human rights of the people, of the member states, of the economic community of West African states. Mr. Falano has secured the release of hundreds of illegally detained persons and ensured the reinstatement of many dismissed students and staff of tertiary institutions. Through the representations made by his law firm, the 27 soldiers sentenced to life imprisonment for mutiny in Akure on those states in 2016 were freed by the military authorities. He also ensured He also ensured that over 3,000 dismissed soldiers were recalled 
why the death sentences passed on 70 soldiers were commuted to 10 years imprisonment. Today, many military officers, including generals, have been successfully defended by Mr. Falano. Through the instrumentality of the law, Mr. Falano's firm successfully stopped the execution of the 12 kids who were convinced, uh, convicted for armed robbery by a military tribunal in Lagos in 1989. The takeover of the Nigerian Bar Association by the military junta, the proscription of the academic staff union of universities, ASU, and the criminalization of strikes by teachers, and the arrest and detention of family members in lieu of wanted criminal suspects and indefinite suspension of legislators from legislative houses. Permit me, because this citation will take eight minutes. Apart from the promotion of political and civil rights, Mr. Falano has ensured the recognition and protection of the social economic rights of the Nigerian people by local and international tribunals. Thus, the courts have upheld the rights of Nigerians to protest without police permit. The right of police, police women to marry without permit. The right of every Nigerian child to free and compulsory basic education. The right of underprivileged citizens to access loans for businesses without collateral. The right of citizens to protection and security of life and the right of the people of the oil producing communities in the Niger Delta region to a safe and healthy environment. Mr. Falano has successfully challenged the proscription of ASU, mass sack of university lecturers, and ejection from official quarters by the Babangida military junta for embarking on industrial action. He prevented the Obasanjo regime from using the courts to stop the Nigerian Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress members from protesting against the incessant increase in the prices of petroleum products. Through public interest litigation, Mr. Falano has contributed to the promotion of human rights and the expansion of the democratic space in Africa. He has successfully campaigned for the enactment of welfare laws for the majority of poor and disadvantaged citizens. On account of his human rights activities, he was arrested and detained in police and prison custody on several occasions from 1984 to 1998 by the former military dictators. He was charged with criminal offenses, including unlawful assembly, incitement, sedition, and treasonable felony, but was never convicted by any court. However, he has been honored for his consistent defense of human rights and the rule of law. Awards. Mr. Femi Falano has won several awards. I will not give you the long list. I will just mention a few. The American Bar Association International Human Rights Award, 1986. The Defender of the Year Award from the International League for Human Rights, New York, 2000. Kwame Nkrumah Leadership Awards in Ghana, 2003. The list continues. <coughs> Membership of professional associations. He's been President Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, Secretary General African Bar Association, President West African Bar Association. In fact, the list is endless here. Publications. Mr. Fermi Falano has a long list of seminal publications, including the following titles Fundamental Rights Enforcement in Nigeria, published in 2004, and other titles. Mr. Fermi Falano is happily married to Fumi Falano, who is also a respected lawyer and human rights activist. Their union has been blessed with three healthy children. 
the popular Nigerian rapper, singer, online comedian and actor, Fola Rinfalano, popularly known as Foz, is one of their children. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome the convocation lecturer for the fourth convocation ceremony, Mr. Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria, to present this lecture. Thank you, thank you, University Orator. The visitor told the university and proprietor, the most reverend Dr. Alfred Adewale Martins, the visionary and project initiator, the emeritus archbishop of Lagos Archdiocese, the highly respected Anthony Cardinal Okoje, the Chairman of Council, Chief Gilbert Grant, and other members of the council management and staff of this great university. I must not fail to acknowledge the presence of the matriarch of the Otedala family, Mama Ekwibide. I'm especially delighted to be here on this occasion. And I think the university management played the first one on me by asking the chaplain, the director of operations, a very good friend, every father of Gundele, who I met in the house of a Muslim, the late chief Ganifa Wayne. It was Ghana that brought the two of us together in the struggle for a new Nigeria. He was the first to call me before the Vice Chancellor gave me a marching order to be here today. As I was thinking of whether to come or not because I had other commitments. Chancellor called me, Femi Otedola, and said, I understand you have accepted to deliver this year's convocation lecture. I said, Femi, I haven't accepted. But now that you are blackmailing me, I will accept the invitation. And I was writing my letter of acceptance, I discovered that our cardinal is the visioner and project initiator of this university. And that was all. Because there's no way you can be a law student in Nigeria without coming across the famous case of Archbishop Olubume Okoye versus Attorney General of Lagos State. That was where my Lord insisted that even though government was going to take over our school, private proprietors motivated to promote education in our country must be given the right to establish schools. And that case was won from the High Court to the Court of Appeal. (laughs) 
when the orator alluded to my struggle that led to the release of 12 boys who were illegally convicted of armed robbery. They were about under 17. Under our law, you cannot convict and sentence anybody under 17 to death. But under the military, I think the fellow that was governor then was Raji Rasaki. He built a bridge. Who built this bridge? Now, who built this gather? Beg your pardon. Those boys were convicted. We went to court and stopped their execution. But barely a year later, the late governor of the state, Chief Michael Todala, granted pardon to the 12 boys. And they are doing very well in the society today. Thank you, Mama. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to take your time. I have a short speech, short address, on the role of young people in our society. But let me start by congratulating the graduates. Because today is your day. I wish you well. I wish you success in the society. Because you are going out there. I'm not going to scare you. But your struggle has got to go on. When many of the people here in the high table and my humble self were leaving universities like you, we already had jobs in our pockets. As a matter of fact, before you wrote your final year exams in Nigeria up to 1980, employers of labor who come to your campus to interview you for jobs. After your graduation, during the youth service year, more employers will come. So by the time you are leaving the youth service, you are completing your youth service, you have about four or five jobs in hands. You then will ask yourself, which one will give me a car loan? or housing loan or both so you could choose and pick but what happened you may ask me a gang of criminals took over our country and destroyed the country they chartered the dreams of our young people and that is why we are in a mess but what I have done today is to tell you not to be frustrated, no despair, because the youth can move mountains as the youth are doing in other parts of the world, and Nigeria included. The motto of your university is is enter at Moribos for learning and character. I assume that you have acquired learning. That is not as difficult as the character. Anybody can acquire degrees, but character is so fundamental particularly in the Nigeria of today. So I'm going to thank the management and staff of the university for building each of you as a person of learning and character. I also congratulate your parents. Given the lapidated, the lapidated and total state of the country. Our country is in urgent need to be rebuilt on firm foundation. And the best builders anywhere in 
in the world are the youth. Youth are the mainstay of society. They are the vibrancy of the future. A country with those youth cannot develop. It is true that youth alone do not constitute a nation. But it ultimately, every nation ultimately finds its vibrance in the voices of the youth. Youth are like the natural light between sunrise and sunset. They struggle between childhood and old age. They are the vital link between the past and the future of a country. You are called the followers of today and the leaders of tomorrow. In the case of Nigeria, forget for a moment what you read in colonial history. You are likely to read or to have read that Nigeria was built by the nationalists, the Azikwes, the Awolos, and the Amondobolos. I challenge that narrative today, and I'm submitting without any fear of contradiction that Nigeria was built by the youths. In 1939, a group of young people came together and decided to form the Nigerian Union of Students, NUS. That was the body that motivated the struggle against British colonialism. In 1944, under the ages of the ransom putins in Adol Kuta, that body, together with 50 other young association of young people, formed the NCNC that the first political party of note, National Council for Nigeria and Cameroon, NCNC. That body embark on a tour of the country to grab, to smash independence from the British exploiters who came here to lord it over our people. It was the youths like Kola Balogu, Osita Aguna, Raji Abdullah Abdallah, Undu Kaizu, and Mokwa Okoye, who founded the Sikhist movement without Dr. Namdi Azikwe. They were motivated by this idea and idealism. So they formed the Sikhist movement. One of the most outstanding youths of the era was Anthony Eromosele Enaho. At 23, 1946, it was gained on months for sedition. The following year, he was jailed for allegedly inciting the military and the police to revolt against colonialism. As he returned from prison, he attended the 1948 A Call for Revolution lecture by the Zikis. He was simply picked up again and jailed along with his colleagues. At the age of 30, in our was in the parliament and moved the motion for Nigerians independence. Many of those who led the country to independence were youths. But throughout the British colonial regime, what they did when they discovered that these young radicals were going to endanger the interests of imperialism, they decided to form an alliance with the Azikwe, the Awolawas, and the Amadu so that 
that is poor will be retained in Nigeria. In spite of the change you brought out through the use of the social media, it's just on the margin of even a government of change. You know, the APC people said they are a government of change. When they saw change, they ran. Because before our very eyes, Nigerians were asking questions that we have never asked before. Even though some of the young people were killed, again they denied. He said, one of them last week, a doubt, was asking, I think they call him Olu or something. He said, where are the family members of those who were killed? And my son called me fast. What is wrong with this man? I said, I don't know. He said that all the people killed at the bus stop, the motor parks in Lagos, where are their family members? In that crisis of 2020, according to the government chief pathologist, Professor Bafonwa, 99 dead bodies were deposited, were deposited in the various mortuaries in Lagos State. Youths must subscribe to a basic program. You must go out there and fight for the right of every Nigerian to have food on the table. Every Nigerian. And it must be three times a day, not a whole one. Once a day. No. You must fight for employment and employment opportunities for all and sundry. The right to basic health care must be fought for by your generation. The Vice Chancellor in his address regretted the lack of resources for universities to develop. We prefer his person. While I agree partially with Mr. Vice Chancellor, I am going to pass your generation to show interest in how the wealth of our country is looted by an infinitesimal minority of economic saboteurs and political vampires. This is not a poor country, but made poor by her rulers. Why? In the last few years, over one trillion naira, over one trillion naira, has been collected from Abuja by state government to fight fraud. So where is the money? The federal government said a few days ago. No, it's so bad now. Not a word. Not a national broadcast from our president who has jetted out again to South Korea. It's a shame that 600 people have been killing your country. Not a visit to any of the areas of... No, 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 no. no. I'm happy that the Catholic Church has done it again. Caritas Nigeria of the Catholic Church has challenged the government by launching a campaign for relief materials for our people. All men of good will in Nigeria must join the campaign. And I argue that since the state is legally obligated to protect the life and property of every citizen, we reject the attempt by Abuja to blame local government and the state government. The federal government must release funds to the affected states. A state like Bayesa is totally submerged. Lawyers who are going to court now can no longer wear their wig and gown. It is as bad. 
the federal government should equally address the crisis of perennial flooding in the river Niger and Benue basins, as well as Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. In view of the reality of climate change, all governments in Nigeria must now learn to keep the environment safe. One of the reasons why we're having problem in Bayesa is the flaring of gas by international oil companies, which can no longer be allowed in Europe and America. But here, that is still the practice. The last point, sir, this is about the wealth of our country. I'm sure you are reading about oil theft. The stealing of our oil. I'm sure you are reading about it. You must show interest to each of you. You must show interest. Because if we can catch the thieves and take our oil from them, there will be more money in the Federation account for the development of our country. What has happened? For 22 years, the oil of Nigeria has been stolen by well-connected thieves. People that the late fella called vagabonds in power. The government is reluctant to collect the money. And so, don't tell us that our country is poor. The other one, and I'm telling you this so that you can show interest in our country. Last Thursday, no, in September, I learned that the central bank wanted to sell a bank, Polaris Bank. That bank collapsed. The central bank gave out 1.3 trillion for the revitalization of the bank. So when I read, I thought it was a rumor that the central bank wanted to sell the bank for 40 billion naira. I wrote to the central bank. Polite letter. And I do that a lot. I want to thank you for reviving Polaris Bank to the tune of 1.3 trillion. But please, can you confirm the rumor that you want to sell the bank for 40 billion? The central bank also wrote a polite letter. A polite reply. Mr. Fallon. We shall keep you posted as things develop. I was not kept posted, but I read on Thursday that it doesn't sell for 40 billion, but 50 billion. The central bank then said to assuage our feelings, the 1.3 trillion we have invested in the bank, the new owners will pay in 25 years. I'm sure if you give this university that bank for 25 years to pay back, it is your profit that you will be turning over to the central bank to pay. But what the government has not done, you know, the thing we are full. The government has not accounted for the assets of Polaris Bank. To the tune of 1.8 trillion, we are going to court because the company that bought the bank was set up in April this year. So, the central bank governor and the other people in government decided to sell the bank to themselves. The point I'm making, therefore, as young people, when you go out there, reject the story that Nigeria is broke. This is why our country is broke. They sell the assets of our country to their friends and all of us are made poor. Let me therefore conclude by thanking the management and the staff of this great university. I don't go around massaging egos. 
the sack, the visioner, my lord, the visitor, the council member. What I say here today, what is my voice visit here, sir? When I go out there, I am going to say, sir, that I have seen one of the best universities in Nigeria. And I was asking the vice chancellor this morning, how did you do it? And I'm happy, ma. Please, thanks for me for us. That is donating a building for engineering to this university. Mr. Vice like Oliver Tist, you ask Femi for more. Because when I leave here today, I'm going to tell Femi that I've visited the wonderful building it's given you. And I know I can predict it. Femi is going to ask me, are you impressed? I go and say yes. I would then say, I would then say to him, you need to do more. And family is going to ask me, about what else do you think I should do? So Mr. Bajan I'm going to contact you later to find out your other areas of need. I'm not a rich lawyer. Like my very good friend, Tony Pinero SAM. You know, I'm engaged in human rights. My learned friend is engaged in money rights, so he has a lot of money. But there are other Catholics, only sad back over another. They say, I'm going to bring them here to help this university. And since I also attended the Catholic seminary, Sacred Heart Seminary in Apure, I wanted to be a Reverend Father. Yes. But as we used to say in the seminary in those days, many are called the few are chosen. Those of us who are not chosen for the priesthood, I'm going to look for a few of them who have dropped out of the priesthood. So that we can also contribute our quota to the development of this university. For parents of the graduates, I pray that these children will continue to do your power. You will have no cause to regret your investment in them. They too will have no cause to regret that you are their parents. You know, that prayer is very fundamental. Very important prayer that you will not disgrace your children because many Nigerians in the political circle are currently disgracing their children. Some children will say, I wish this man was not my father. Are you aware of what I'm talking about? Because I attended a program like this and I prayed for parents. I prayed that the student will not be disgraced by their parents. So the parents were embarrassed. So one of them said, Stop! What do you mean? We can't disgrace our children. I said, You can. At that time, a Nigerian governor had just been jailed in the United Kingdom. His wife had just been jailed in the United Kingdom. His lawyer had just been jailed in the United Kingdom. His sister had just been jailed in the United Kingdom. And his girlfriend has just been jailed in the United Kingdom. The children wanted to change their names. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Finally, my Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I have made pledges which I'm going to redeem today. Mr. Vice Chancellor, please 
make up with me after this program. Thank you very much. very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Femi Palam, for doing justice to that topic. I'm sure our young ones here, you listen carefully to the story when he took us down memory lane. I'm sure we are all inspired. Are we? Thank you very much once again. We just want to have a short interlude from uh, orchestra. The persons whose names will be called have fulfilled the requirements of the statutes and regulations of 
Augustine University and have been found worthy both in character and in learning to be admitted to the degrees of their various faculties. With the graduates in the Faculty of Humanities, Management and Social Sciences, please stand. I invite the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, Management and Social Sciences. Banking of Finance, in Accounting, Banking and Finance, Business Administration, and Economics of Mongolia University, Ilara. I admit you all. We begin with DSC Accounting. Okay, Kiwoba, Thomas. First class, Thomas. Rose, Adonji, Asha. Second class, Thomas, Papa Division. Okay, Kiwoba, Adonji, Kiwoba, Adonji. The combat division. the Imam Abayomi representing the 
Lagos State University of the Vice Chancellor of Lagos State University of Education. Graduate of Augustine University. Hereby pronounce my membership in the Augustine University Alumni Association. I'm promised to abide by its rules and principles. I pledge my loyalty and commitment to the philosophy of my alma mater. Continually learn and develop in character as I fulfill my social and professional responsibilities and serve my community. I will strive to ensure Augustine University's place as a global icon. A catalyst for national and world development and leadership. I pledge to dedicate my services whenever and wherever needed as an alumnus of this great institution. So help me God. Congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association of August University. The Archbishop, the proprietor of Augusta, the Chancellor, the Pro Chancellor, all members of the Board of Trustees and Governing Council, the Vice Chancellor and all principal officers, our esteemed missionary, all protocols duly observed. I'm happy to stand before you all today to present a wonderful set of alumni who are going to be proud members of the Augustine University community who are going to keep flying the flag of Augustine University high and who will carry the name of Augustine University everywhere you go for good. My dear alumni, you are now members of the Augustine University Alumni Association. Remember, before anything else, that you are AU rights. Always ensure to remember where you're from. Remember all the trainings you received here. Remember that AUI molded you, and AUI will always need you. Do not forget that. Once again, congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
you, Mr. Emmanuel Onya, our proud alumni president. At this point, we want to have the address from the proprietor and visitor to AUI. Proprietor, sir, I invite you to present your address to the congregation. Your Eminence, Anthony Cardinal Koji, I Emeritus Archbishop, the Vision of the University, the Chancellor, Mr. Femi Atedola, in absentia, Chairman Board of Trustees, Sir Steve Omoja from members of board, Post Chancellor and Chairman Governing Council, Chief Gilbert Grant, members of council, the vice chancellor of Austin University, the registrar, all other principal officers, the guest lecturer, invited vice chancellors and other principal officers of other universities here present, the Reverend Monsignor, Reverend Fathers, Reverend Sisters, religious here present, staff of the university, parents, graduating students, and invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I add my voice to say welcome to you all, distinguished guests, university faculty, families, friends, and members of the graduating class, our new set of ambassadors welcome you all to the fourth convocation of our university. Just yesterday, we celebrated the World Mission Day in the Catholic Church worldwide. World Mission Day is a day that the Church celebrates the mandate given to her by Christ to be an agent of growth and development in the world among other goals that Christ set for us. It is therefore in my mind providential that we celebrate today with this convocation evidence that the Church is trying to fulfill her mission. For you, the men and women of the graduating class of 2022, today marks your transition from being students of AUI to becoming what I call missionaries of AUR. Dear graduates, you all are missionaries that Augusta University has prepared to carry out the sole duty of effecting change in the society, not only through your delivery books, at your workplaces, but also in your interpersonal relationships with those you come across as a journey in life. Let the world see you and see the standard of Augusta University in you. Be Christ-like. Be Christ-like in value, be Christ-like in character. Be guided by that motto of the university, Pro Scientia et Moribus, for learning and character. Our country, Nigeria, needs men and women of character and integrity. Men and women who will be the change agents to move the country out of its present morass. Be the change. Be the difference. Stand up and uphold the values that have been deposited in you during your time in this university. I am glad that we have had the guest lecturer, our respected Mr. Femi Falana, say so much to you on what you need to do and how you will do it, inspiring you to do what the university has tried to prepare you for. Our university is engaged in higher education. 
In order to help redefine what higher education should be, holistic. Our objective in engaging university education is to help in the formation of young persons who will be equipped with the values that will help to disrupt the negatives that seem to define the society in which we live today. Negatives such as corruption, greed, selfishness, lack of altruism, among others. These negatives become more worrisome every day. You can easily observe the trend in which many people, including even youths, no longer believe in the dignity of labor in our client. Many do not seem to believe in the dignity of hard work and patience in growth. Rather, for them, success has to be instantaneous. And that is why we see growing the growing phenomenon of what is popularly called Yahoo Yahoo, that is an increase in the rate of cybercrime. This get rich quick syndrome has contributed to the insecurity that we are experiencing all over the nation, even as politicians and the elite continue to weaponize poverty for their own benefit, but to the detriment of the nation and our citizens. We are graduates. As graduates of AUI, we must be ready to disrupt this trend and establish a new order. At some point in time, by the grace of God, all of you will assume positions of leadership. Let your education and formation in the last four years be the guiding principles of your day-to-day endeavors. Dear parents, guidance, and sponsors, hearty congratulations to you. As you witness the graduation of your children, their graduation, which is your reward for all the sacrifices and the hard work that you have done over the years. We are grateful that you gave your children to us to farm, and we are glad we have had the opportunity of being part of the, their life journey. May your labor of love over your children and words never be in vain through Christ our Lord. I felicitate the Vice Chancellor and his staff. This for you is another hard one, Lauren, as today marks, marks the culmination of your tireless efforts over the years. Congratulations. I congratulate and thank, use this occasion to thank all those benefactors and benefactresses of the Archdiocese of Lagos, within and outside the Archdiocese. They have been pivotal in the successes we have attained so far. Some of them have been mentioned and will continue to express our gratitude to you. We thank you for your heavy financial investment and your services in kind that has brought about the establishment and the continuous development of this university. I am delighted that Mr. Femi Falano today has added his clout and his name and his efforts to the class of benefactors of our university. We pray that the Lord in his goodness will bless your desire and your commitment to the growth of our university. Once again, we are grateful to you all for being part of our history part of the history of our university. May God bless you. Thank you for listening and God go with you as we go back to the investigation.
or vegetables, and then also visit the stand for our entrepreneurship uh, program. Our students have made so many products out there, so please patronize our students. Thank you for coming. I now invite the Chancellor to declare the congregation closed. Now, I now declare the
My name is Professor Chris Odetunde, the Vice Chancellor of Augustine University. Today is a special day for us, in August, the family of Augustine University, and our students, uh, parents, and benefactors. We have been able to graduate uh, 61 students, and we have increased the number of students uh, steadily from 192 to 400. Five, and I hope by the end of this exercise, we'll get to uh, 800, or so, uh, 800 or more. Usually, to run a university is not easy. But with the help of the uh, Lagos Adapsis, we are doing very well. But we also have donors who give us, bu who give us buildings, like Femi Odetodela family. They gave us the engineering building. The law building is going on, and it will be completed very soon, and we can start hiring uh, students. I mean, we can start uh, the students. We can start bringing them in. But more importantly, you see that we have mass communication. In addition, we are going to be having nursing uh, and computer engineering uh, postgraduate program. I think the play, best place to be is Augustine University as it is growing leap and bound. More importantly, the surrounding, as everybody will see, is very serene, beautiful environment to learn. And so we're expecting a lot of students and their parents to visit. We thank God for the visionaire who started the university? That is the, Arbish, the uh, Cardinal Okoje, his, his ex, uh, eminence. We also thank His Grace for being in there for us and helping us. That is uh, Dr. Alfred Adewale Martins. The members of uh, BOT uh, Council, we have been working together and uh, any system is, is, uh, is, we are trying it to make sure it is better. So we thank God for everything. We are glad for the graduating, uh, the graduate, the student who graduated. I would look forward to seeing them perform in the industry like never before. So we thank you very much and God bless you. Um, hello, my name is Emmanuel Onye. I am the president of the Augustine University Alumni Association. Um, today is a great day. Today is the fourth set graduation in Augustine University and it also happens to be the third anniversary of the Alumni Association. The Alumni Association was inaugurated on the 24th of October 20, 2019 um, and it's, you know, it's, it's great to see a fourth set you know, join the, the alumni. Um, the alumni has been doing great. Um, clearly, Augustine University did a lot for its, for, for, for its students. Um, whenever we get new members of the alumni, you can see that there's something different, something that makes them you know, graduates of Augustine University. Our uh, graduates are spread all around the world in just three years, you know, doing well, placed in good um, organizations, and representing Augustine University in a very good light. Um, we are grateful to God, and we're also grateful to the management of Augustine University. Um, without Augusta University, all this would not have been possible. And so, you know, we, we, we're very grateful.